Right then guys, welcome back to the next video. It seems you all enjoyed the last instalment of building the new section on the railway, so I figured we'll continue with the theme and build some more. So a lot of you were agreeing that I should sort of try and blend the two scenes together rather than have two separate areas. So I'm gonna try and work out if I can do that and it's gonna be a bit of a nightmare. The main problem is that from this level up to this level is so tall it's around 18 centimeters and then of course you've also got the dive under which drops it even more um now l cut creative retaining walls that i am using on brake spear these are cut down by around a centimeter maybe a touch more um they're obviously nowhere near tall enough and i don't think there's anything on the market that actually is tall enough so i would either have to get a hold of l cut and see if they'll do me a custom set which I don't know if they would or not. And even if they did, they'd probably have to be twice the height these are. So it might look a little bit weird having this up here somewhere and having enormous walls. And I think what I'm going to do first is I'm going to try and build this sort of portal here. Uh, so obviously this is going to have to come up and have some framework and stuff. Uh, basically, I build the frame for all... Oh, knocked everything over. Build the frame for all this. So this sort of sits up here and has a framework to support it all because remember this has to come out so nothing can be attached to this. Um, so I build that up to the height I want it at. I'll go a little bit taller than needs be just so that it helps not have such a massive difference in height. Um, I'll do that and then I suppose we'll come back and try and mess around with some sort of tunnel portal or something like that. Here's the initial work then. So I've done a bit now. We've got a supporting wall behind here, which supports the two retaining walls you can see there. Whether I change them out in the future or not to something a little smaller scale, I'm not sure. Um, but I had these laying around, so I figured might as well use them. If not, um, they are a bit on the big side, brick-wise, but I could always um, repaint them so they're more like a stone sort of setup. But yeah, you can see they're quite tall and I've also chopped away the front of this top section and I've changed the supports underneath so it's supported down here now and this bit was empty so the idea now with the polystyrene you can see uh, is that it's going to have an embankment down and it's going to go down to meet these retaining walls with obviously some grass and stuff however obviously this being separate to this there's going to have to be a join so I'm going to fiberglass over this, I think, uh, just do a thin layer, just so it's got some sort of substantial strength to it. Um, and then, of course, I've got to come in and I've got to fill in this piece and I've got to make sure that it can split. So try and get it as sort of seamless as I can. Then once that area is all good, I've got to move on to here. This is the hard bit because I've actually got to extend the road out because it narrows too much there. So the road's got to come out here. And this road, of course, goes across the top there. So I'm going to make one long wooden piece, like a support piece, to go along that uh, obviously holds the top structure in. And it's going to sort of sit up like this with some uh, wood, wood sort of battens across to support it at 90 degrees. That's going to go across and then it's going to get to around there and then obviously drop down. And that's going to support that sort of... Um, polystyrene structure so I have it drop down here and then have a filler piece in the center so that the polystyrene has got something to sit on top of so that I think is where we're at at the minute you see this little stub sticking out so that's going to be the road carrying on so of course again I've got to build from here to here so this bit has got to come out and then I'll just do a support I might do it out of, out of um, perspex or something so that it doesn't detract from the scene too much because obviously you wouldn't have the support probably going straight up like that but I'm a bit stuffed with width so I think that's the best way we're going to get around it it's not going to be too bad um, so I guess I'll just keep cracking on and um, the only other thing is I've had to move the head shunt um, I'm not sure if I mentioned it earlier I've got to move the head shunt forward so it's all loose at the minute because it was it was over there earlier it was about there and you can see it's going to be way too close so we're going to go over here instead and uh, again if i do get some perspex i can always put a little small piece to stop anything falling over the side but yeah, that's where we're at all right so you can see this bit's all in now and uh, obviously the 
back and brakes bit is not fitted. So just to show that it does all go in separate. Oh dear. Bit of a faff. Obviously, eventually, will be attached. The top sits roughly there, and then you can see I'm going to get some polystyrene on here, and uh, obviously bring that down. These, of course, will sit here, and then that level. That's not too much of a drop then. Right, next task then, I want to put some fiberglass on this. If you follow the rest of the layout updates, you would have seen I used P40 over on the canal seams to the embankment. Um, I did go through a lot of it because I basically made the embankment almost solely out of this stuff, but it's absolutely rock hard, it's great. You usually use it on cars. Um, so what I want to use this for is obviously I've got the base polystyrene shape. I've then gone through with the foam car, so it's a little bit beyond the face of the board. The idea there being is I can put a skim of fiberglass and it's got enough sort of depth to it to be strong. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because obviously this is gonna be the front face when it goes to shows. And I want this to have some strength to it. I don't want it to just be able to be prodded by people's fingers, because you know what kids are like and things like that. So um, yeah, we'll put a little skim of this over. So that's how it looks out of the pot. It's like a paste. I've just got an old scrap piece of wood that I'm going to put it on. So you get your little spreader. Um, you probably should wear gloves doing this, but I live life on the edge. That's probably the most cringe thing I've ever said. So uh, yeah, we'll chuck a bit on there, go for a little more. And then you get your hardener. So it's a two part job. You want to put a little bit in, not too much. So that'll probably do us. And then you need to mix it up and make sure you mix it so it's nice and consistent. So you can put this aside now. And I'll chuck that over there. What you never want to do is when you're putting putting it away, you never want it in a position where the hardener can obviously mix with the, the uh, fiberglass in the pot because you'll never get it out. So it'll be rock hard by the time you come back. So yeah, just got to mix this. So obviously you know when you've mixed it properly because the colour goes consistent. The only thing I would say is the reason you'd wear gloves doing this is it's a nightmare if it gets on your fingers because it's very sticky. And also fiberglass is very itchy. It's got, as the name suggests, little fibres in it. So it's extremely itchy stuff. Fairly well mixed now. You get about ten minutes to work with it. Depending on it depends on how much hardener you put in. So obviously you want to mix it fairly quick, and then when you're happy, start spreading it on. It doesn't need to be re a really thick layer. And uh, also, I need to remember that this has to come away for now because I'm not finished with this top board. So. It needs to be removable still. So we're just trying to get a nice even spread of it over. Uh, obviously we'll probably have to mix more for the next part. Well, we definitely will. But you can see there, I'm just get a nice even spread of it. Doesn't matter if it goes over the edge of it, you can always sand it down later. 
So, here's a funny story. I didn't realise that fibreglass reacts with certain foam and it actually eats it away and dissolves it. So, obviously I've got this layer on, but you can see it's all sunk and there's nothing behind it anymore. <laughs> as well as this lot down here is sunk. So you can see I've put a second bit on now to try and bring it back out where obviously it will meet the uh, next piece, which will sit in front. Um, and you can see it there where I've got a little bit of fiberglass on there. It's eating away at the polystyrene. Uh, now this is very sort of low density stuff, don't know if that matters. But yeah, um, <laughs> not my finest moment. I can't remember what I did over the other side. I think I um, used, I think I used foam, polystyrene stuff, sorry. But I, th I think I remember putting masking tape over it to um, stop it being quite so wavy. And that's probably what's protected it. But yeah, there's a little lesson for you guys. If you're gonna use this method, put something over the top. <laughs> It's coming! It's coming! Oh! <laughs> Where is it? Oh! <laughs> so anyway moving on that's now set and trimmed down you can just see here it's all trimmed down nice it's in the right sort of area where i want it this bit's done as well and i've just chucked some brown paint over it uh, obviously i've not sorted these bits out yet but you will notice this has appeared and it's got a massive overhang on it and it's sort of bolted down through this way that is because I want the road to look as if it carries on, and of course, to the edge of the baseboard. So this is in line with the edge of the baseboard, and that will basically be a half relief bridge. And you'll notice that this piece sticks out here as well, and that'll be the same sort of thinking. So again, we're gonna have um, a sort of half relief uh, overbridge in this area. And of course, I've got a lot more woodwork to do because it has to be down here somewhere the other side so it's got to be the same sort of width maybe i might thin it down a little bit um just to continue the street scene from breakspear so that's gonna be a nightmare um, what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna take this massive bit bit of foam um polystyrene sorry i'm gonna put that over and i'm gonna cut round with the um foam cutter tool because I don't want to use a saw because it's so messy. So if you're using a saw and you also own a foam wire cutter, what is wrong with you? Um, but yeah, I'm going to do that now and uh, hopefully slot that in and the road can uh, go around the top and we can sort of tie this all in. I've also glued down this track after, after lifting it to change the position. So you can see now it's further over this direction and uh, that should be plenty enough now to get the scenery in. With the retaining walls and such so i might even get some ballast on there because i get a bit excited <laughs> so uh, for now though i will do the polystyrene i'll chop that up and uh, we'll see how we get on so i guess this is the bit where people usually put music over a time lapse but i can't be bothered so la 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 so that was fun. You can see we got the polystyrene shaped now. Those three bits are in. But you can get the general idea. The, this road, excuse the plane going overhead, how inconsiderate. <laughs> this road is going to continue. It's going to be about this sort of width, hence there's a flat section up, up top. Um, so I've just got to get some 5 mil wood, 5mm uh, plywood and do that piece of the road. And of course it will integrate into here as well. And then the rest of it will be an embankment. But um, that's the general idea. And of course we'll have the, the split going across so that these two will be separate, but with static grass on there, things like that. Hopefully it will hide the join 
but it will still look good enough when this board comes out to be displayed. So uh, yeah, uh, the other thing I did, I was a little bit bored and I wanted something else to do. So just before I went to bed, I shaped this bit of wood. So I just got the chisel and just sort of shaped it down. And then I put a little bit more bit of polystyrene in there and shaped it and then uh, put some glue over the top because obviously you can see we have two different levels here. So I put a bit of glue over the top, put some um, N-gauge sort of sized ballast, which is this stuff by Concepts from AGR. So that's the brownish blend, two mil ballast. So I've put that over as a base layer and then I've also mixed it with the usual medium gray blend for the main lines to give you a bit of sort of difference of colors. And I'm quite pleased with how that's gonna look. I think once it's all got a load of rubbish sort of uh, sprayed over it, nice brown colors and stuff, it'll all blend in well and it will look pretty good. And the gray in this section will make it look different to the uh, head shunt slash yard area. So I think what I'm gonna do now is ballast some more of this because I quite like the look of it. Of course, I've got to um, chamfer off this edge Hence, I didn't do this side. So I'll probably do that first. And then, uh, yeah, chuck some ballast on, go down here. And that'll just get us some sort of base layer going. And I'll probably also cover this in something. And then at some point, I'm gonna grab some more wood and do the road. That's uh, a bit of ballasting done then. Unfortunately, I've run out. So I'm gonna have to give uh, Anthony a call, I think, and uh, pay him a little visit. So I'm taking these boards out because stupidly, I didn't put a leg at the back there and there is actually a board join. Here is the reason you need to do it. <laughs> Look how much it's dipped. So uh, I need to put a leg in the back there and then uh, I'm also gonna put the one foot wide board in here to square this off. I'll obviously remove this plug socket and hopefully then the lift out will all fit in a bit nicer as well because you have to jiggle it around a load to get it to actually sit in there. So fingers crossed it will level that board out a bit as well as this one because at the minute we've got a drop and then it climbs and then it comes back into Hereford which is level. So yeah, not the uh, best move by me but we're going to fix that now before I do any more. You can see that after I ballasted I did put some greenery down and it's looking pretty cool. Obviously this is just a base layer for when I come and stack grass it. So it goes around here as you can see. And I've also dug this bit out because I need to put this line in here and it was all sitting a little too high and I wanted to bring it um, a bit wider before the curve started. So I'm gonna have to fill all that back in again, but it'll be worth it in the long run. But yeah, for now, taking all this out, rejigging that. With that out of the way, you can see how wonky the board was. <laughs> oh dear. So we have had a majorly productive day today. Handily for me, um, I was messing around in here and then James and Ross happened to be free today, so they popped over. And because they were coming over, I decided it was about time we tackled this. So you'll notice this is new. It's not featured in a video before because we've just put it up. So uh, this is the new return loop board that has gone in for the lower level. So I'll turn the camera around and we'll have a look. So yeah, this is where we're at. We've got this whole board in now. It's all self-supporting, it all works, and uh, I'm very happy with how it sits. It's nice and strong. You can see space-wise, we've got plenty of space between the top of that Mark III coach and the underneath of the top level's baseboards. You can easily get your fingers in there to retrieve it. So this board goes all the way back to the wall, as you can see, and there is a nice big cutout in the middle so if we get any derailments or anything going on under there, then I can get underneath. I can pull the five inch gauge stuff out, get underneath, and I can reach a hand in and grab stuff. So that's very handy. You can see underneath how it's braced. So it's braced all around the edges, and then the, it's braced across again where the cutout is lengthways, and then it's braced across from there to box it all in. So the center's nice and strong, you can see there. How it sort of looks and you can also see the room we've got for the five inch gauge stuff underneath it just squeezes in so that was a main concern of mine is whether this will actually fit now 
Of course, we do have the trade-off where there's not a lot of room to get in underneath. So that's going to be a bit of a pain. So I'll just have to make sure the curves and the points are all up to scratch so we don't have derailments under there. However, I'm very pleased with how that looks. Now, another thing that's going on here, you would have noticed this board lurking in the background for some time. I have mentioned this in previous videos. This is the board that used to sit here. And I basically just use it as a glorified storage shelf or a little workbench, whatever, um, when this lot was all covered in muck. So obviously that had to go to make way for the incline. So that has been surplus, but there's always been a plan for that. That board fits perfectly in this gap. So if I take this board out of the way, just so you can see the space, this gap here will be completely squared off. So where this sits out here, it fits perfectly across there. It's the exact size of that. That's a five by one area. So that board will sit across and it will square all that area off. What that allows me to do is I can come across this corner with the scenery. So it comes around in a nice curve. I'm thinking of putting some houses along here, just backing onto the railway. That'll look quite nice. Something in that sort of area or style. And then obviously this can all be scenic as well. And we have a nice road bridge across here because I don't want this um, corner board seen it because they're very tight curves. I don't want you to be able to see them basically. So we're gonna have a road bridge, which will basically cut this scene off about here, which would also give a reason for the head shunt stopping short. The head shunt currently stops short just because obviously the angle of it, it runs out of baseboard. So that was the original reason. But if we have the bridge there, then that gives it more of a reason for it too. And obviously it will lead into this scene a lot nicer. Um, while we had these boards out as well, I did put some hardboard along the back for a back scene. Obviously, I need to touch in a bit of paint where it wasn't quite high enough in that area. And uh, the back scene, again, it ends there. You can see the original one behind it, which was just glued to the logs on the cabin and it's ruined because moisture. Um, this won't be an issue, though, because this is away from the wall. It's got a little gap. And of course the back scene stops there because the bridge is going to stop there so you don't need it because this obviously will be hidden however you'll be able to get your arms up and over in case something drastic happens <laughs> but yeah that's really good um a lot of messing about as well to get a support in the back corner you can see there because this board was drooping down um, over time it sagged a lot because originally i didn't put a leg there so that's now all nice and flat there's no leg here now, but obviously with the board coming in front, I will brace that. So the board in front will be attached to this board and this board. That will hold this board all tight. And then we'll have a leg. I'm thinking putting a leg in between the two five inch gauge storage lines. So it braces off this and it goes up here. And then of course there'll be a leg in this corner, um, just sort of subtly out of the way, hopefully. So that should be enough to get that in and nice and solid where I can work on stuff and then have the scenic area behind. But in doing so, because there used to be a leg here, I couldn't fit the two five inch gauge lines in the right place. So now when you open the doors, you can access both five inch gauge lines perfectly. You haven't got to mess around holding stuff from the back line to the front line, trying to sort of inch it over if you like, just don't, so you don't pull your back out. <laughs> Um, so that's nice. You can just load stuff straight in and out now. So that's perfect. Of course, the front one needs extending back a bit, but we'll get to that at another stage. So that's the five by one board just temporarily placed in just to give you an idea of what I was sort of going for. And uh, I think it finishes it off nicely, having it all squared off rather than having this sort of cut out. It looked a bit weird and obviously it gives me a lot more storage space and a little sort of workbench area. So I think that's going to work really nice. Again, we gain a lot of space for scenery here, which previously was obviously where I had my cutting mat, as you might be able to tell. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and sand all this off at some point and give it a fresh coat um, of paint or whatever I decide to do with it. But that area certainly needs cleaning up a bit. And as you can see, as I mentioned, you gain this this bit here where we can curve the scenery around as well so i do want to continue this top level on um, but i want it to gradually decrease on the lift out section to the point where it's pretty much flat by this curve so i want it to gradually come down and then be fairly flat around here 
So I'm thinking like a row of houses or something where you can just see the trains passing from behind them would look really nice at certain camera angles. I quite like the obstructed views that you get on my layout. So for example, down here, not really be able to see the trains from the side. It's gonna look really cool. Um, hence, I'm looking into camera setups. Again, um, trains going through the back. So you can just get the shot of them emerging from the tunnel. You'll have the same tunnel that end. And uh, I just think it makes it look a bit more realistic. Well, in my head anyway. It's on the round. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Like a finger up an arse. <laughs> but yeah, super pleased with that. The boys did a great job. I wouldn't have been able to do this on my own because it's too much to lift and it's too fiddly. So I'm glad we got that done. It's nice and solid. I already had planned out the track on it. I'd been placing track on, drawing out, drawing around it to get the idea of where I wanted stuff to go. So I'm pleased and stuff will fit on that nicely. So I'll have to obviously make the bridge section that goes between the two but that won't be a problem, we'll do that at some point. But that's the main battle. Of course, another problem is I'm gonna probably have to drop that board down to actually get the track in. So, but it's no real biggie, to be honest. Um, it'll be the sort of thing where I drop it down, get the track in, do the whole lot in one day, get the point in, points in, everything, wire it all up and then put it back in and leave it. So uh, hopefully it goes to plan when we get around to doing that. That's a job for down the line though. I'm not bothered about doing that right now. Um, other things we've been doing is we've made a start getting the top section sorted. So I'll just pan the camera around again. So you can see the idea now that we're going for here. We've got this little sliver in for the road to continue on. So if you look from this side, you can see the road is fairly straight. It's a nice sort of size. Um, I am wondering whether to do it one way with a path or whether to keep it both directions. Um, but then obviously you can't have a path because it's too narrow. This was just because of the confines of the space of the board. It's too narrow for all that. So I'm going to have to decide which one I go for, whether I want a path or not. So we'll have to wait and see. You can see as well the angle of this board. It all fits nice. And this is going to be a nice continuation to the street scene. We'll have a nice bit of space there. Obviously, I've got to do this side now, tackle this side with all the support structure to go across and to come across here because obviously this needs to sit around there and then of course all the brickwork and stuff will carry on and it'll all integrate nicely with the top level hopefully i am going to probably run the multi-tool across here and have this top street as a separate piece because then i can take it out and i can cut the underside of brickwork and things like that and make it look a bit more proper so uh, that should hopefully look pretty good obviously the idea then is the street will continue on this way in theory and then you've got that road as well which is another street going this way and they would of course meet up somewhere around here but of course the confines of the space it is what it is but yeah i think that they, yeah, i think that that plan is going to come together nicely and uh, i must say thank you to you all for persuading me to go down this route because of course it was do this or it was doing two completely separate scenes so i'm glad i've chosen this option um what I'm going to do tonight after I stop waffling on and put the camera down is I'm going to plaster cloth all of this area and then once it's dry tomorrow I'll come back and I'll start getting some brown paint on and then we can think about static grass and scenery and things like that and of course at some point this will all have to be cladded with brick and uh, work out how we're going to integrate that sort of bridge piece but so far so good that's the plaster cloth applied then I've gone pretty mad with the layers. There's quite a few on there just to give it a bit of strength. But you can see the difference there. It really gives it a nice sort of shell. And I only finished it about 10 minutes ago and it's already sort of touch dry. So I'm gonna chuck some brown paint over just to tie it all in. And then tomorrow when it's fully rock hard, I'll obviously come along with a little slitting knife and just make sure I go down those little areas again, just so that it does all nicely come apart when the time comes. But yeah, happy days, that's looking pretty good. Oh, hang on, I forgot the music again. 
啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦。Make sure you subscribe. La 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 la. Blah 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 blah. And just to make things better, I forgot to video anymore. So uh, I got some stacked grass down. We started doing the front of the bridge, and uh, then I got some rust oleum aged iron paint to do the tarmac surface, and then we got to here. So I think we're going to leave that there for today. I'm quite happy with the progress so far. You can see it all coming together now and the general idea. I'm uh, exceptionally pleased with the way the roads are gonna look. Of course, it's the same stuff that I used up there, except um, I did get some, em not emery cloth, sorry, some scotch bright and just go over that just to smooth it off a little because this is a little rougher than I'd like. So I'll do that at some point. And of course, it'll all need weathering it and need details and I've got to put the walls in and things like that and uh, of course the bridges to go in here not decided what I'm going to do there yet and uh, then it's ballasting at long last I've got a couple sleepers to fill in where I've moved the track over to accommodate the new setup um, and then I'll be happy but yeah I've also got to, of course stack grass that bit I just did the one section just to give you all an idea of what's sort of going to be the uh, goings on but yeah, really pleased. Um, I must say, sorry if this video, the audio is a little bit all over the place. It's something I didn't realise till I came to editing. Um, I know I've obviously spoken a bit too quietly in some of the clips, but you could probably see in the background it was night time. So I didn't really want to uh, upset the neighbours. But uh, I'll try and eradicate that for the future. We'll see how we get on. And uh, hopefully next time we'll make some more progress. So please, if you feel like it, like, share, subscribe to the channel. And hopefully it won't be too long until the next video. So from me, it's bye for now. Thanks for watching.